Oh, Hi YouTube, it's Shannon and Luis from Double Exposure and thank you guys for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about shooting film portraits of each other. And how that went. <laughs> Just a quick background. This is medium format camera. Oh. Which we showed you in our first video. We used to shoot more medium format photography, which if you don't know, it's just a bigger format than 35 millimeter. The negatives are larger, so you get more detail. As soon as we got a taste of what the medium format could accomplish from one negative, we just fell in love. It's kind of hard to go back to shooting a smaller format once you've experienced the capabilities of medium format. We've barely shot at all the past few years. We've just been focusing on other stuff, on filmmaking um, yeah. and all digital stuff. So uh, this camera, this beautiful little baby here has been sitting on the shelf, uh, just collecting dust for close to two years. And we thought it was about time that we break it out and um, get in touch with our roots a little bit. And shoot some portraits of each other, which when we were first started dating, we used to shoot a lot of film portraits of each other. Before I even really knew her or met her. We were in a uh, introductory photo class together and I asked her to pose for a window-like portrait for me. So it, it was just a thing that we would do in school, you know, just photograph each other all the time. So we decided to shoot a roll of portraits of each other now um, and we thought we would split the roll. So a roll of medium format gives you 12 images and so we decided we would take six images of each other and just, switch in between. Just split the roll in half. And see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. So we have a bunch of film still that we never use and we keep it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. We have a stockpile and it turns out that most of these rolls of film have been expired. So we pulled out this roll that Luis thinks is probably expired and we loaded it up in the camera and got it all ready to shoot. So we decided to just shoot something, you know, really casual and chill just as a refresher and getting our feet wet and it was amazing. It went well, it went so perfectly. I couldn't imagine a better way to start shooting medium format again. Here's what really happened. I decided to shoot Louise first and I felt really rusty. I didn't even remember how the camera worked. It felt very uncomfortable and I wasn't really happy. I was just kind of like getting through it, you know? I thought the lighting didn't look good. I wasn't good at directing as a photographer, you know, it was a big part of it for me and, and that's a, a muscle that can get out of shape. And then it was Luis's turn. And I shot a few, a few things that I thought were clever, which whenever I try to be clever, um, it's, it doesn't pay off. But first off, we had, a, we had another problem because in order to get proper exposure on one of these cameras, you need a light meter. Oh yeah, we didn't go into that yet. <laughs> this camera doesn't have a built-in light meter. So we have a handheld light meter that has also been sitting on a shelf for years. So when I opened it up and tried to turn it on, it wouldn't turn on and lo and behold, the batteries had leaked acid all over the place. So our trusty light meter was unusable. And we had to use a phone app that I just- Very janky phone bad phone app yeah. that we trusted wow. we're using the the bad app to meter each photo yeah. it's Luis's turn to shoot me in there and i yeah. was impressed i thought you know they're gonna turn out good um they were interesting Thank you. um different kinds of shots and then Luis got to the last shot of me so we had completed the role <laughs> and we were excited to move on and uh, i looked down and i realized the number one mistake for rookies, shooting medium format is not removing the dark slide. We are idiots. What do we do? The dark slide was in the whole time. So this is a dark slide and the way it works on medium format camera is you see how the, com the camera is like compartmentalized. This is the film magazine, which goes on the back. It's where the film actually goes in. And then this is the camera body um, where the light actually comes into the lens and exposes the film. But between the sections, you have the dark slide, which prevents the film from getting exposed prematurely. It's there usually as a safety measure so that you don't fog your film and you only shoot when you're ready. 
But the problem is that you can forget that it's in for the role, which means you're shooting, but the act, the film is never being exposed because it's blocked by the dark side. So we realized the dark side was in the whole role, so none of the photos existed because it was all the role was still blank. We spent an hour and a half shooting each other, and you know, really, really making sure we framed everything really well and the lighting was cool. And then we realized it was blank. So Luis decided he was gonna go in the dark and reset the roll, get it back to, to, the, to, beginning. to the beginning so that we could shoot it again for the first time. Yeah, so we reshot the roll in a haste. And then he ran off to work and then he decided he was gonna process it that night because we process black and white film here at home, at home. which we wanna get into detail in another video about. Our, we have processed at home. Not in a while, not again. In a, again, not in a long time. However, what happens with photochemicals when they expire is they start to become erratic and they start to become unreliable. So we have all the necessary chemicals to process black and white film. However, they're all expired. Expired film, expired chemicals, expired people. No, we're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so he processed his role, like in the middle of the night. And then today he went to tell me how it turned out. And not very good. This is what underexposed negatives look like. They look very thin. You can see through most of them. It's negative. So the see-through part turns black when it's a positive. So it's a little too much uh, black for what we were going for. These images are really, really dark. So here's how they came out. So it could have been the janky light meter app. Uh -huh. It could have been the expired it, film. It could, it could have, have been, been the expired chemicals. Yeah. It could have been a mixture. And you know- It could have been the terrible photographers. Yeah, it it's, a, it's, it's, it's the whole package. It was a perfect storm- Of bad photography. Of, of bad photography. It was a comedy of errors. Yeah, we were developing a pattern. We made a video about how we fa failed at vlogging. And now how we <laughs> failed at shooting a roll of film. So the moral of the story, what we're trying to get at with this video is that if you suddenly jump back into something that you loved years ago that you used to feel like you were at a certain level with, it doesn't mean that you're still going to be at that level, unfortunately. Whenever you revisit something, there's going to be a lot of things that get lost in... Backslide. Yeah, backslide. And so we want to share with you our failures to show you that every failure is, a, is an opportunity. It's a lesson and a chance to grow and get better. And it also keeps you humble because you might think in your mind, like I said, that you're at a certain level oh, with something. Oh, well, yeah, I can shoot medium format, you know? Yeah. And then you come to do it again and you're like, oh. You really need to maintain a certain level of activity in order to maintain a certain level of skill. I think that sometimes we fall into these arrogant moments in our lives where we believe that we're really good at something, so we don't need to work at it, such as a relationship. If we get to a point where we're just too comfortable and we feel like everything's good and we don't have to work on it, that's when things start going bad. We stop communicating. Stop communicating. You start taking things for granted. So that's it. Stay tuned for more rusty photographers. Getting back to it. <laughs> we're gonna change the channel to Fail Nation Part Two. <laughs> we hope you derive Schadenfreude from our experience. We also want to update you guys that might not be in California about the situation that's happening on the West, West Coast. California is on fire. There are dozens of wildfires that are raging all up and down the uh, West Coast of the United States. And uh, we just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that and uh, thank all of the brave souls that are doing their best and putting their lives at risk to put this these fires out and protect uh, civilian lives so thank you thanks anyway thank you so much for watching we hope you enjoyed like and subscribe if you did and we'll see you friday and i'm gonna miss you guys so i'm just gonna take a picture to remember the moment the dark slide the dark slide